in figure setup, I, I do a little bit different method. We're uh, similar to what Todd was saying about getting sweeps down like this. So I might start something that looks like so. Now, what Greg's doing here, too, is you see him constructing it. He's, he's, he's going a little advanced here, too. So again, just let's be aware that we're, we're going here. He's not doing the stiff up and down straight body that would be sort of the mannequin looking one. You know the one that uh, is sort of the pose of most action figures that you see in the, the, the toy aisle? You, I, I, I recommend, and I'm sure Greg will back it up, that you know get that, get that down first. And once you've got that down first, you can now start to do, which is this step, which is another big step, which is basically putting it in motion, which becomes a big deal. Because otherwise, it just looks like a mannequin. It looks stiff. But you need to get the basics of the body. And now the question becomes, how do we start turning the body, which is what grows so, them? All right, so let me, let me put together a couple of ideas of how I approach. First, first thing, you, know, you want to get the, the action, the sweep of the body, right? So we, we've got that thing happening, OK? And so, I just go kind of like a, you know, almost like a stick man, except he's a little bit fatter. And then I take it to a level that's similar to using uh, cubes and cylinders so that I can understand my perspective. So I might carry this line here, and this now represents the underside of the arm that you'll, you'll see. So if you really want to break it down, I have a box. See how I have this cylinder? See? And you can always put a cylinder inside this shape. See, so I'm working out my perspective simultaneously. I'll do the same on the side of the body. Right? I've got these sweeping lines. We know we have to build a torso in here because we have a rib cage. You know, you might bring, start the shoulder here, bring the second line down, see? And now we're seeing this plane, okay? So I'm still, I'm building the same kind of cubes and cylinders, but I started with sweeping, sweeping lines. And now I have this motion here, and I'm, I, need, I know the perspective is like this. Cylinder, so it's kind of a melding, you know, of, of the two styles, and uh, this is my approach. I think you get a, a little bit of a looser uh, look once you get to this approach. And see, the same thing happens here. I carry a secondary line down, and now I see that I have a, another pl inside plane. And this is how I set up my perspective on a figure using this this roping method. And when Todd said this is more advanced, it's because I do I do just simple lines. But you know, you can keep it more together, you know, and, and, and never disconnect and sort of form the thing out of scribbles. Um, I certainly do it that way still occasionally. But um, if you get to the level of confidence where I, I am, I tend to just use a few sweeping lines. And, and, the, and the reason, let, let me just be clear, the reason that those quick lines matter, that every time you tighten up your drawing, it's just going to get stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. So, the, so it, right out of the gate, the quicker you can just get it on paper. As a matter of fact, sometimes if you draw it like something that is going to be this big, if you initially draw it here and then blow it up, because you can draw it real quick in a small space and then blow it up, you're going to get, you're going to get a lot of quick movement on it. Mm -hmm. but, but what ends up happening is if sometimes if you just go straight to constructing a pose, it, instead of just getting it out there, you're trying to go, okay, turn, go. Arm up, arm, and, and you can tell it looks like you're posing a mannequin instead of getting those those sweeps down. And and again, that's what Greg's saying. Don't be afraid for it to be sort of a little jello at, at the beginning because you can come back in there and refine it because we're, we can put the layers on here. See, because one of the things I want to say too is one of the problems when you're building a figure, you want a figure to look natural, and uh, when you get into this construction mindset, what tends to happen is you end up with a very stiff looking figure, everything's squared off. And it doesn't look very natural, like it's uh, like a, a human body that's constantly capable of movement. And one of the things, Todd's drawing a hand right now, I'll sketch some, something there for you in, in a second. But I'll, t I'll tell you on how to, how to get more of a natural look to your figure. And, and there's, 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 there's one tip that I always tell other guys who want to draw, I go, you know, find motion and stillness. Even if, even if a body is standing still, show that it's capable of movement. You know, we've all seen the bad photographs when people cause you the pain of going, I got my photo out of my Would you like to see some pictures? And they, they show you, here's me in Niagara Falls. <laughs> it's true. Here's me in front of the giant redwood tree. 
<laughs> right? And it's a boring picture, right? Now, it'd be infinitely more interesting if the person was simply just doing this. You know, a break in the hip. It shows that the body's capable of movement. And so one of the things that happens with the body, there's this locomotion that happens where angles are always shifting and doing this. It happens when we walk, one arm goes forward, one leg goes back. It goes when we stand, our weight goes up on, on this hip, so this hip goes higher. But what happens to balance the figure is the shoulder drops. So keep your angles opposing each other and your figures will look much more natural. And the other great thing, you know, people go, wow, Greg, you know, when you draw, you a hero, he just, he's got this weight and this mass to him, huh? You know, and I'll tell you, it's a very, very simple trick. And I'm going to give you one of my tricks and I'll expect money and payment <laughs> for is everybody draws superheroes in a very squared look which is okay sometimes. You know, you want Superman posing, looking tough and mean and majestic, you know, you give him more of a squared look. But gravity affects us all. And the older you get, the more it affects you. And so one of the tricks I use to uh, make a figure look like it's heavy is I put a slight bow in the shoulders. Instead of drawing it squared up like this, I let them sag just, the little, just enough so that you feel the weight of this figure coming down. It's the same with the legs. You might put just the slightest bend, because bones bend. If bones didn't bend, they would break. So you have a straight line, but if you put just the slightest bend in the, in the legs, the, the, the upper legs, the lower legs, again, you start to feel the weight of this character. And so between the r slight round of the shoulders, the bends in the legs, you start to feel mass which is important with heroes, right? You want to know that a hero is powerful and that if a hero was to come and hit you, you'd feel like you got hit by a truck. These are a couple of little tricks. That and, if you, and if you look at characters like the Creech, which is uh, Greg's, and then, and then I had the good fortune of doing the Hulk. I, I, it was the same way, guys. I, m my Hulk never stood up. Mm -hmm. he, he was always, he was always fl I always thought of him as like an elephant. Mm -hmm. you know, that, and again, I did the Gray Hulk. So it was, it, it was, I, I felt like he was so massive, even to himself, that he sort of hunched over so that when he walked like an elephant, it would the ground would shake instead of him sort of standing up and going like that. that that's more of a regal. That's more how Superman would walk. Right. He's more regal. He's like a king. And if you start, when you're drawing all these characters, if you sort of give them something in your brain that you can get your head wrapped around, then you go, we can get there. So let's, let's see if we can jump off a little bit and, and talk to you a little bit about perspective and how that worked with the body. It's really going to be the hardest piece and once you get it, the best piece that you're ever going to get, which is how do I now take the shoulder and the bicep and the, and the forearm here with the hand and how do, I, how do I now move that, how do I now move this hand so that I, get, I can get it to be called foreshortening or a perspective.